final quality control check. Did you know that Cuba produces over 100 million cigars every year? That's more than any other country in the world. But how do they do it? What are the secrets behind their legendary tobacco industry? How do they transform the raw leaves into the finest cigars millions worldwide enjoy? Today, we will explore the fascinating journey of Cuban cigars, from the fields to the factories, and from the rollers to the smokers. Join us as we discover how this factory produces millions of cigars annually. To begin with, let's look at its history. The fascinating history of cigar production traces its origins back to the ancient Mayan civilization, where smoking tobacco leaves is vividly depicted in pottery and artwork dating back to the 10th century. This early evidence points to the deep-seated connection between humans and tobacco, laying the foundation for a tradition that would evolve over centuries. One significant historical milestone occurred in 1492, when European explorers observed the indigenous Taino people of Cuba smoking tobacco leaves tied together with a string. This encounter marked a crucial moment in the convergence of tobacco and the Caribbean, as it foreshadowed the pivotal role that Cuba would play in the global cigar industry. As the years progressed, cigar production expanded, with countries like Spain and France joining Cuba in shaping the industry. However, Cuba emerged as the world's leading producer of cigars in the early 19th century. Went straight to the farms of Pinar del Rio to see firsthand how tobacco is far harvested. Pinar del Rio, located in the western part of Cuba, gained recognition as the premier region for cultivating tobacco destined for Cuban cigars. The climate of Pinar del Rio, characterized by warm temperatures, high humidity, and regular rainfall, created an optimal environment for tobacco cultivation. The region's distinctive red soil, rich in nutrients, further contributed to the unique characteristics of Cuban tobacco. The meticulous process of tobacco cultivation in Cuba begins with seeds provided by the government's laboratories. These seeds are carefully planted in greenhouses around late October and are later transplanted to the fields after approximately one month. The plants take about four months to grow and are typically harvested in March and April. The meticulously tended fields are a site of waist-high tobacco plants arranged in evenly spaced rows, a testament to the care and precision involved in the cultivation process. Understanding the anatomy of a tobacco plant is crucial in cigar production. Each plant has three main types of leaves, ligero, seco, and volado. These leaves serve distinct purposes in the construction of a cigar. The highest quality leaves, often large and structurally sound, are selected for the wrapper, the outer layer of the cigar. The wrapper is integral to a cigar's initial aroma and flavor, contributing significantly to the overall smoking experience. Moving inward, the binder, though slightly lower quality than the wrapper, is essential in holding the filler in place. The tightness of the binder directly influences the draw, a critical factor in the smoking experience. While the binder leaf may not need to be visually stunning, it must harmonize with the flavor of the wrapper, creating a consistent and enjoyable smoking experience. The filler, comprising the innermost part of the cigar, plays a pivotal role in determining its flavor, strength, and boldness. There are two types of filler. Long filler, composed of whole leaves running from the head to the foot of the cigar, and short filler made up of shredded pieces of leaves. The filler leaves are meticulously shredded and pressed into the correct shape, contributing to the overall complexity and character of the cigar. To sum it up, tobacco cultivation for cigar production is a meticulous and complex process that requires a unique combination of climate, soil, and expertise. 
From the ancient Mayans to the Taino people and the modern day techniques in Cuba, the journey of cigar production is marked by a rich history and intricate traditions. Cuban cigars' distinct flavor and aroma stand as a testament to the centuries-long evolution of this revered tradition. But what happens next? How is harvesting done? After the tobacco plants have undergone meticulous cultivation and reached maturity, the next crucial step in the cigar production journey is the harvesting process. This typically occurs 70 to 130 days after transplanting, and there are two primary methods employed. The first involves cutting the entire plant and splitting or spearing the stalk before hanging it on a tobacco stick or lath. The second method consists of removing the leaves at intervals as they mature. For cigar wrappers and aromatic tobaccos, the leaves are strung using a needle, while those designated for flu curing are looped, utilizing a string tied to a lath or stick, which is then hung in a curing barn. To ensure the leaves don't break or bruise during the necessary handling and curing, they should wilt without sunburning, and they may be left in the field for a few hours to two days for this purpose. The curing process is another central stage that determines the ultimate characteristics of the tobacco leaves. There are three main methods of curing, air curing, fire curing, and flu curing. A fourth method, sun curing, is employed with aromatic types and, to a limited extent, with air cured types. Curing involves four essential steps, wilting, yellowing, coloring, and drying. These steps trigger physical and chemical changes in the leaf, regulated to develop the desired properties. Air curing is primarily achieved through mechanical ventilation inside buildings, with additional heat provided by burning coke, charcoal, or petroleum gas when needed. This method, taking one to two months, is utilized for various tobaccos, including dark air cured types, cigars, Maryland, and Burley. Fire curing resembles air curing, except that open wood fires are ignited on the barn floor after the tobacco has been hanging for two to six days. The resulting smoke imparts a characteristic aroma of creosote to the tobacco. The firing process can be continuous or intermittent, extending from three weeks to as long as 10 weeks until the leaf achieves the desired finish. Flue curing, on the other hand, involves small, tightly constructed barns with ventilators and metal pipes extending from furnaces around or under the barn floor. Fuels such as wood, coal, oil, and liquid petroleum gas are used. Heat is carefully applied and the leaves are closely observed for chemical and physical composition changes. Flue curing takes four to eight days and is typically used for Virginia or bright tobacco. In bulk curing, leaves are evenly loaded into racks arranged in a curing chamber. Following curing, the leaves may be piled in bulk to condition for a period before being prepared for sale. Grading is a critical step that involves categorizing the leaves based on factors such as position on the plant, color, size, maturity, soundness, and other recognizable qualities. The fineness of grading is determined by the type of leaf and local customs. After grading, the leaves are typically packaged into bales of convenient size and weight for inspection and removal by the buyer. This process is more elaborate in developed countries like the United States, where flu-cured tobacco is graded meticulously and each grade is bulked or baled separately. Most tobaccos entering the world trade, excluding aromatics, are assembled into bundles or hands of 15 to 30 leaves and tied with one leaf wrapped securely around the butts. For exported tobacco, this form is maintained during shipping. Packing factories often stem the leaf, removing most of the stem, leaving the lamina or leaf blade, usually through threshing machines before re-drying. Tobaccos, excluding aromatics and cigars, 
are typically regraded if necessary and re-dried after purchase. Moisture needed for aging is added, and the tobacco is securely packed in cases or hogsheads before export. The trend in packing factories is to stem the leaf before re-drying, often accomplished by threshing machines or occasionally by hand. Aging, particularly with cigar tobaccos, may be hastened by forced fermentation procedures after purchase. Aromatic tobaccos undergo manipulation after purchase, including factory grading, baling, and an elaborate in-the-bale fermentation process before reaching the ultimate manufacturer. But how exactly do these processes unfold? How do the raw tobacco leaves transition from their initial state to become the flavorful and sophisticated cigars enjoyed by enthusiasts? Let's delve into the intricate journey of fermentation and aging, exploring the steps that elevate raw tobacco into a refined and nuanced final product. Fermentation and aging represent the crucial stages in transforming raw tobacco leaves into refined and nuanced products that enthusiasts worldwide savor. Immediately after harvesting, tobacco leaves are not ready for consumption. Instead, they undergo a meticulous series of processes that alter their chemical composition, texture, color, and flavor. Two fundamental processes, fermentation and aging, play pivotal roles in crafting the richness and complexity that define high-quality tobacco products. Fermentation serves as the alchemical transformation of tobacco leaves. In this process, the leaves are exposed to a carefully orchestrated combination of heat, humidity, and oxygen. These elements initiate the breakdown of organic compounds within the leaves, including sugars, starches, proteins, and nicotine. The outcome is a release of carbon dioxide, ammonia, and other byproducts, alongside the formation of new compounds that elevate the flavor and aroma of the leaf. Initiating with the meticulous sorting of leaves based on size, color, and quality, the fermentation process unfolds by moistening the leaves and piling them into stacks called pylons, each weighing up to two tons. The arrangement of piles ensures adequate air circulation and temperature control, critical factors in the fermentation journey. The process's duration varies, lasting from a few weeks to several months, contingent upon the specific type and origin of the tobacco. Fermentation brings lots of good things to the tobacco leaf. First, it makes the leaf less harsh and bitter, smoother and more pleasant to taste. Second, it helps the leaf develop its unique flavor and smell, which come from the kind of tobacco and its origin. Third, fermentation makes the leaf better for smoking. It burns nicely and is easier to light and draw. Lastly, it removes or lessens harmful stuff like tar, nicotine, and nitrosamines in the leaf. Following fermentation, the tobacco leaves enter the aging process, a period of controlled storage lasting from a few months to several years. This phase allows the leaves to mature, stabilize, and further develop nuances and subtleties in both flavor and aroma. Once the fermented leaves are carefully packed into bales, hogsheads, or wooden boxes, they find their home in dark, calm, and humid spaces. Now, let's explore the factors shaping the aging process. Firstly, how long the aging takes depends on the type and quality of the tobacco, spanning from six months to over a decade. Secondly, where these containers are stored matters. The temperature and humidity affect how fast and how much the aging happens. Lastly, the interaction between the tobacco leaves and the packaging material adds flavors and aromas to the leaf. Why is aging so great? It does many good things for the tobacco leaf. It makes the flavor and smell even better, giving them a more complex and refined touch. It also evens out the chemicals in the leaf, making everything more consistent and stable. Plus, aging helps keep the leaf in top-notch condition, making it sturdy and resistant.
So, just like fine wine, tobacco gets better with time, bringing out the best for those who enjoy a good smoke. And now it comes to rolling. Cigar rolling is an ancient craft that transforms tobacco leaves into the refined and flavorful cigars we enjoy today. Skilled torcedors or cigar rollers are crucial in this intricate process. Their expertise determines the final product's quality, appearance, and taste, making cigar rolling an art that requires years of practice and dedication. A cigar comprises three main parts, the filler, the binder, and the wrapper. The filler, the cigar's core, is a blend of tobacco leaves that provides its prominent flavor and strength. Torcedores carefully select and combine these leaves, categorized as seco, giving a light and smooth flavor, volado, offering a mild and neutral flavor, or ligero, providing a robust and spicy flavor. The binder, a lower quality leaf with imperfections, wraps around the filler to form a cylindrical shape. Finally, the wrapper, the outermost leaf, covers the binder and filler, giving the cigar its appearance and influencing its flavor, aroma, smoothness, and shine. Rolling a cigar involves a series of steps and techniques. The torcedor begins by arranging filler leaves in a fan-like shape, creating a loose bundle known as a bunch. This bunch is then placed into a wooden mold called a bonch, which imparts the cigar's initial shape and size. The bonch undergoes pressing in a wooden press, known as a prensa, applying pressure and heat to make it compact and firm. The torcedor then hand adjusts the shape and size of the bunch to ensure smoothness and uniformity. Next comes the wrapping process. The torcedor takes the binder leaf, moistens and stretches it, and wraps it around the bunch in a spiral motion. The excess binder leaf is cut and the seam is sealed with natural glue. Following this, the torcedor takes the carefully selected wrapper leaf, cuts it to match the cigar's shape and size, and wraps it over the binder using the same procedure. Again, the excess wrapper leaf is cut and the seam is sealed with natural glue. A sharp knife is used to trim the foot of the cigar, providing an even and neat finish. To complete the cigar, the torquedor adds a cap, a small piece of wrapper leaf, to the head, preventing unraveling and allowing the smoker to cut the cigar before lighting. A band, usually made of paper or metal, is applied to the body, indicating the brand and size of the cigar. The torcedor inspects the finished cigar for flaws or defects before placing it into a wooden box called a boit for protection and preservation. Cigars come in various sizes and shapes, influencing the smoking experience and flavor. The size is measured by length and ring gauge, and the cigar's diameter is 60 fourths of an inch. Common sizes include the Corona, a standard size with a balanced and smooth flavor, the Robusto, a popular size with a rich and full flavor, and the Churchill, a larger size named after Winston Churchill, known for its complex and refined flavor. Different shapes, such as the Torpedo, Pyramid, and Perfecto, offer diverse smoking experiences with varied and dynamic flavors. Once the intricate process of crafting cigars is complete, the journey continues through a rigorous quality control phase to uphold the high standards of the cigar industry. This phase involves a thorough inspection, testing, certification, and the final touch of labeling and packaging before these finely crafted cigars reach consumers. The first checkpoint in quality control is inspection. Cigar manufacturers meticulously scrutinize each cigar, ensuring it aligns with their stringent quality benchmarks. This includes checking size, shape, and weight, and examining the wrapper for imperfections. 
Trained experts employ specialized tools and techniques like draw masters to measure airflow through the cigar or digital calipers for precise dimensions. Tight draws can affect the smoking experience, while inconsistent measurements can alter flavor and aroma. This detailed inspection, performed by skilled professionals, is essential to meet the exacting standards of both manufacturers and consumers. Beyond inspection, cigar manufacturers subject their products to testing to confirm they meet stringent quality criteria. A critical test is the flavor assessment, conducted by experienced tasters who evaluate taste and aroma based on criteria like strength, complexity, balance, and finish. While flavor testing is subjective and dependent on personal preferences, it follows industry guidelines for consistency and accuracy. Because as you can see, I'm not even touching the flame and the end of the cigar is warming up nicely. Another pivotal test is the burn test, which evaluates combustion and ash characteristics. This objective assessment involves lighting cigars and observing how they burn, last and maintain ash quality. A superior cigar should burn evenly, steadily and slowly, producing firm and white ash. Burn testing measured with stopwatches and scales ensures a satisfying and enjoyable smoking experience. After passing inspection and testing, cigars may undergo certification by independent organizations to validate their adherence to strict quality standards. Notable in this realm is the Cigar Association of America, CAA a key organization representing the interests of U.S. cigar manufacturers and distributors. The CAA conducts a certification process involving laboratory analysis of cigars for physical, chemical, and microbiological properties. Additionally, it verifies their origin, authenticity, and compliance with relevant regulations and laws. While voluntary, CAA certification provides consumers with a guarantee of quality and safety. Other organizations contributing to testing and certification in the cigar industry include the International Organization for Standardization (ISO) and the International Cigar Manufacturers Association (ICMA), which represent manufacturers worldwide. We have our final circle of trust or our final quality control check. The final stride in quality control involves labeling and packaging cigars for distribution and consumption. These aspects are pivotal, providing information, protection, and presentation for the cigars. Labeling includes affixing bands or labels, indicating the brand, origin, blend, and other pertinent details. It serves not only to convey information, but also to distinguish cigars in a crowded market. Packaging encompasses placing cigars in boxes, tubes, or other containers to shield them from damage, moisture, and light. This protective layer preserves freshness, flavor, and aroma while elevating the visual appeal and prestige of the cigars. Labeling and packaging are indispensable to ensure cigars reach consumers in optimal condition and quality. In conclusion, quality control is indispensable in the cigar industry's commitment to excellence. Inspection, testing, and certification collectively contribute to maintaining strict quality standards, ensuring every cigar meets the expectations of manufacturers and consumers alike. The final touch of labeling and packaging is equally crucial, providing vital information, protection, and an attractive presentation. By upholding these standards, cigar manufacturers continue to deliver high-quality products, delighting cigar enthusiasts around the globe. The journey from meticulous crafting to stringent quality control reflects a dedication to the artistry and tradition embedded in the cigar industry. Yeah.